David Fairchild is an author who's with us here just now. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me over. Now, you've got a new book out called The Exodus. How would you describe that book? This is a book that uh, it, it explores the concept of what happens when a fence gets to take control of law oh. and control how and who gets to say what happens to people who offend you. Ah. To be honest, I misheard you then, and I thought you said offense instead of offense, oh. and I was so confused. <laughs> You have to forgive me, I'm from Utah and we have that messed up dialect. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting concept then, because I suppose in this day and age, people are offended by all sorts of things and it's just sort of assumed that we have to pander to them. But just because you're offended doesn't always mean you're right. Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we seek offence so much, it seems, that we look for a reason to justify why we should be allowed to be offended. We, we mm. seem to enjoy being offended <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. It, it's pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. So where did the idea for the book come from? Is it just things you've observed from the world uh well yeah i teach um critical thinking classes uh, mm -hmm. uh, in college and it's getting very difficult sometimes to um see where that line is where we're allowed to actually show students that there are different perspectives out there mm -hmm. because uh, universities are founded on the principle of uh, of bringing in diversity of people and philosophy together to allow them to not have to travel outside, uh, have to put in a whole bunch of money to travel to hear different philosophies. Yeah. And we're just pandering now to, to so many people who just get offended at just anything and everything that yeah. we're starting to lose concept that it's okay to be offended and others can have perspectives. Mm. And why do you think these offended people seem to be so successful at getting their way, I suppose? I think because they uh, are, are, are so tuned in on trying to get people to recognize that they're being offended and that they need to forgive them, that they forget how to forgive themselves. And it becomes a, you need to forgive me or you need to accept me, but I don't have to forgive you. And I'm not yeah. going to because that's not my responsibility. It's yours. Mm. And I suppose there's a bit of another side as well, where some people get offended by the people getting offended, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. It's, it's also like the person who, who tries to go out to offend you and then you don't get offended. Oh, and yeah. so then they get offended that you're not offended. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it, it, you know, I, 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 I like to tell people, um, and I picked it up from my mentor, that offense is um i know people hate hearing that offense is a choice but offense mm -hmm. can only be given it can never be taken so even if i intend to offend you and you don't uh, allow that power to happen then there's no offense on your side now that's not to say that people um that's not to say that that gives people a right to be rude and mm -hmm. and and just a uh, 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 brash to everybody but it should help us to remember that you know there's danger in when we start to justify why we can take offense and why we should be allowed to take offense and we have a hierarchy mm. to offense now that this person up here has more right to be offended than this person down here and it's 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 just uh it's this person can say well i have more right to be offended than you because i fit into this category and you don't know anything about what it's like and, and it's like they forget you know just because you might not be this person mm. that doesn't mean you don't know how to observe and pay attention and see what offense is because everybody can take offense at something yeah that's true i suppose everything you could possibly say could offend someone somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And depending on where you live. And yeah. that's kind of something that happens in this book is this book breaks up, uh, particularly America, into a whole bunch of sub-nations because depending on where you live, I mean, we have different political boundaries. So if you yeah. live in one particular state, of course, people are more offended by a different political state. And depending on where you're in these boundaries, you may be offended by something else, whether it's offended at unions or offended at people who just say something that doesn't support your opinion or whether you're gay or and it just depends on the different area and I kind of pull those out and show the different boundaries of these subnations in America when they're directed by a fence that's prominent in those different areas yeah and how long did the <laughs> book actually take you to write when you first began it um it actually took me about 
five months to do it. But what happened was I started writing it. Um, so, so in this book, what happens is um, we, we, I, I've talked about this world that takes offense, mm-hmm. but for people to escape that offense and get to safety, they have to actually use the drug cartel tunnels under America mm-hmm. to sneak into underground cities while they look for a place to go because countries borders are closed. And so what I did was when I first started writing, I had a character in mind and I started mm-hmm. writing it and I knew what I wanted it to be, but it just didn't, that character, it, it was a pretty cool character. And a lot of people like the character. Um, and I just hit a point where I went, this is not the story I wanted to happen, or this is not taking the direction. And then it just occurred to me that it just really wasn't, that wasn't the character to drive it. So I said, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to go back and I'm going to start over. And so I started over and created this uh, this other character and, sh- and she just came out, took over. And I still use the first part. In fact, the first part of the book is what I first started. But then this other character emerged and went, that's what this is. This is a collection of short stories in different areas of the world that all contribute to a bigger story. And so we have a bunch of different short stories going on and short stories for me are much easier to write. So that helped to make it go a little bit faster for me. But then um, they all keep pointing back to this big story. And yeah. that's what I loved about this character that came out, which would have never been created if I wouldn't have said, okay, stop here. This character's not going where I want. Mm-hmm. And the new character character just blew just blew everything the book wouldn't be what it is without her she's awesome yeah and i think she is. how is the book told as well is it anti people who get offended or is it kind of told maybe from the perspective of someone that gets offended easily um it's got a mix of a lot of that in there mm. um in one area of the country we see it through the eyes of somebody who um who's trying to hide her son and herself uh because they have uh, mental disabilities mm. and you hide that because for some reason we must have a villain and we are putting a huge villain mask today on people who have disabilities particularly in areas of say uh, gun control or health issues you know this person's got mental disabilities so they're going to snap and kill everybody and and so um it, it starts with uh with the perspective of that person trying to hide from a community that finds their ailments offensive and then we jump to a community where they find people who uh work work without belonging to a union offensive and that they're willing to uh, e- um, exile those people. Uh, and, and then we do have people who are the ones who take offense. And mm. so it's it's told through a lot of different perspectives. Yeah. And why do you think so many people seem to be looking for something to be offended by? Is it just they've got nothing better to do? Is there some sort of psychological thing that's in some people and not in others? Uh, I think it's because we are training ourselves to look for fault with everything. Mm. Uh, Social media has trained us that when somebody does something, um, we are more likely to attack what they did wrong than we are to support what they did correctly. If uh, And I like to use this analogy. If a movie star, for instance, says something wrong, we want to have our opinions validated. And when a movie star who has a big microphone gets up and says something against us, then uh, against our opinion that we lash out, we get mad, we call people, hey, don't ever use this person and again, never, you know, don't see his movies so much to the point that we're willing to destroy the lives of the people who this person happens to actually employ. I mean, that's how much we hate this person. We, you know, we just hate you so much. No more money for you. And while you're at it, you know, uh, forget every single person who works for you, because if they if they were good people, they wouldn't work for you and yeah. forget their children who need food. That's kind of true, I suppose, because people with the most controversial opinions seem to have had the biggest publicity recently because everyone's getting outraged by the things they're saying absolutely they absolutely are it's uh if you don't if you don't agree with me then you're wrong mm. it, it um Rather than hold discussions, which discussion has never been about who's right or who's wrong. It's about all these different perspectives and different angles that many people might not take into consideration. I see life this way, but maybe you see something that I am missing that you can say, well, what about this concept? And we have this discussion. But what but what we've stopped doing, and it seems to me as as, as I've observed a discussion over the years, is that we're, we're starting to not have this discussion. We're starting to turn it into a contest. We 
think it's debate where debate is a contest. Debate is there's a winner, there's a loser. Um, and that's why we that's why we have debate competitions. But um, we seem to think that's how discussion works too. I'm right, you're wrong. Well, if I'm wrong, yeah. prove it to me. No, you 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 prove you're right. It's it's your job. And so I think that's where we're kind of um, losing it is we are no longer uh, aware of how to have discussions in many levels. We think the discussion that we should have should follow the rules of how we communicate on social media. Yeah. And do you think that people are maybe more stubborn now that they're not willing to maybe admit after Ooh. an argument or discussion that maybe their mind has changed? I don't know. There's a lot of stubborn people out there through the ages. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, I would say this. Um, I would say there's a lot of people who don't know how, and there are a lot of people who are unwilling to. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people who may not have seen it work as it should because they haven't been around discussion yeah. enough. Um, the social media, if we've grown up on social media, for instance, what a wonderful place to learn yeah. how to have discussion with each <laughs> other, right? Yeah. So. If, if that's all we do, how would we possibly learn to hold a discussion if we're not seeing people hold real discussions? So I think yeah. that might have some of it. I don't, I don't know if it's stubbornness. I think there's mm. some play in there, but I think it's more of we're kind of forgetting how. Yeah. And do you think there's sort of a lack of forgiveness with us now in general? Because if somebody does the slightest thing wrong, that's it. Their career is over in some cases. So mm -hmm. we sort of just don't give people a second chance in anymore i suppose no no uh, we don't like to give people a second chance um, one example that i really like to show for this is maybe maybe you saw it um years back with um uh, nicholas sandman uh, he was the high school student who wore the red maga hat and the um and uh, uh the news media just attacked him saying he was being disrespectful and the more we to a to a native american and in a situation and the more we dug into it the more we found out the news had it wrong mm. and um they had just attacked this kid but what was interesting to me was here's a kid who's not an adult yet not he hasn't reached the age of being adult he's still developing he's still learning philosophies i mean he hasn't grown up yet that's all there is to it and so many adults celebrities adults all around the world came out calling for the destruction of a kid a wow. kid and they were so happy about it they yeah. were just like this person and there were death threats they were yelling at the parents they were just calling him out i mean really just destroyed this kid's life and yet then we found out oh media got it wrong mm -hmm. and very little i mean he had to fight for an apology but people were so quick to go hey let's destroy this person when they should have been going hey uh you know maybe he made a mistake i don't know can we find out what the full story is i think i don't want to jump to a conclusion until i know everything yeah. and that's how forgiveness could work and even if you do learn something you go so he made a mistake maybe he'll improve now but they're not going to improve if you just hate on them because they're going to be more they're going to be more strong-willed against it if that makes sense yeah and actually that's maybe a thing you know we don't have as opinionated tv news channels and whatever over here but certainly newspapers sometimes you see a headline and think that's outrageous what and then you actually click <laughs> on the story and it's not really what the headline says it's a bit <laughs> Misleading. Right, right. There's so much misdirection and clickbait anymore yeah. that it's just <laughs> you mix that into mix mix in the misdirection and the clickbait into a society and a an, an increasing society that gets locked more into social media with each generation. And you have people who just don't know how to communicate as well as I don't want to say as well as we used to, as well as they could. Yeah. Absolutely. So in terms of the book and the story, how well does the world work when you have offence taking so much power? Well, uh, in terms of the book, um, what we end up happening, what we end up having is a uh, government who uh, imprisons, basically, oh. uh, people who offend whatever. In, in one area, when people have mental ailments, we put them to work in orange groves because that's where we can keep an eye on them. In another area of the country, when somebody says something that doesn't subscribe to the majority's opinion they put that person in offender's prison and uh yeah. in in one in in one in one section of the book one person breaks out of that prison and takes a whole bunch of people hostage so that he can get out of the city 
Um, and um, in another area, they they in another area of the country, they've almost become uh, Iron Curtain uh, in a way. Nobody can Ooh, come right. in, nobody can go out. You must be, uh, you must fall in line with a certain uh, lifestyle. You must fall in line with a certain uh, belief system. Um, and uh, and in all of this, um, there's, there's one there's one working party trying to get in and to rescue the people who are trapped there, and that's right. this drug cartel. And and there's there's a little um, there's a little bit to it where they're actually trying to develop a, a way for them to to get out and go somewhere else, but yeah. uh, without letting anybody know. So in terms of how does offense control it, offense controls absolutely everything. You have uh, you have political power controlling everything that people are doing you have store owners uh, for instance in in one uh, part of the book some kid who is not um not part of a union a union member has to push the shopping cart through the store and pull off all the things that you buy and a little kid finds something that kid that the the union member can't find and he puts it in the shopping cart and oh uh-huh. big lights big this has, does your child have a problem with acting out do we need to get child services involved do we need to evaluate this kid and that is that is um, the that's the level of, of where we're going with this offense. I mean, just even taking a jar of jam, putting in a shopping cart. Ooh, you've done my job for me. You need to go to jail, and you're a child. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you think this is stuff that realistically could happen in the future? Because I suppose a few of those things have happened in places in the world in the past and present. But I don't know if it's necessarily to do with offense. <laughs> um, I, I think there's places where I don't think we've had any laws yet going off on it, and I okay. hope that we don't. But the conversations that we that we hear around in politics, and and this is in various places of the world. It's not just the U.S. It's, a, it's in various places. Is that a lot of laws and a lot of discussion going on in politics do center around making laws because of uh, offense? Mm. Yeah, that's true. And you've done an audio book as well with a narrator, and I take it the narrator isn't you because you mentioned it was a she. <laughs> right, uh, uh, Jacqueline Rendell, and yeah. she's awesome. Now, do you listen to audio books? Not really, to be honest, but I feel like it's something okay. I should do. No, I, I, I encourage it. A lot of people sit there and say audio books are not really reading. Yeah. Um, and, and I disagree with that as somebody who teaches, you know, reading, writing, yeah. composition, uh, English, literature. Um, but what's interesting is uh, the, the, I, uh, there is a life in audiobooks that can come out that you don't always get in the book itself. And my narrator, Jacqueline Rendell, does that with this book. Um, I, I, I say that there are two versions of this book. There's the version I wrote and there's the version that she tells. And there are so many things that she does in her book, in, in her audio uh, narration that takes it to the next level uh, that I'm not able to do. And uh, she was just, she's just absolutely amazing. And there are a lot of audio books. And I, I tell people this all the time. There are a lot of audio books where people pick up an audio book and they listen to it and you hear the person, they might have a bad dialect or no intonation to their voice whatsoever. And they read the story like this and click, click, click. And, and you know, and you can hear them inhaling their juji fruits as they're as they're reading and um and you get annoyed and you can listen and go man i could do such a better job than this person well this is an audiobook uh uh, performer who you would never say that about this Mm -hmm. book has more than 200 characters in it and she has different voices for all of them you can tell them all apart her energy is just uh it's just amazing she was incredible to work with i i i just loved working with her i look forward to doing it again um and uh, but i know that she's getting she's she's doing so much audio work now that who knows if i'll be able to in the future but she's awesome i encourage it's i love the audiobook i encourage that just as much as the book itself the two different versions of the story in my opinion yes and i'm assuming by the book having 200 characters in it that's as in people and not letters otherwise it would be a very short book right right be people. just as long as a tweet i think which would be quite appropriate right right hey if people want to buy 
buy that tweet. I'll I'll be happy to sell it, you know, but no, no. (laughs) Well, where are we able to check out the book if we'd like to read it and find out all about this alternate reality? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's available in um, Kindle, hardback, paperback, and audiobook. You can get the the Kindle, paperback, hardback on uh, Amazon. You can get the uh, audiobook on Audible. Well, you can also get the the audiobook on Amazon as well. But that's where I like to direct people to to go get it because easy place to yeah. go pick up your books. Yeah, and everyone's used Amazon before, so it's easy. Who, who doesn't? I mean, yeah. I, I love all the I love all the brick and mortar bookstores, but the the numbers don't lie. The uh, Amazon sells more books mm. than all, all the books in the world combined. So you know, I must say, people <laughs> are using Amazon. So. Safe yeah. bet to say go to Amazon, but you can get it other places. You can get it Barnes and Nobles. You can get it at various online bookstores. Yeah. It, it's 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 pretty uh, easy to track down. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for joining us here on the show today. It's been great to have you on the air. Thank you. It's been nice meeting you.